good morning. If you'll stand with us. I'm treating my sorrows. I'm treating my shame. And I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm treating my sickness. I'm treating my pain and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord oh, we sing yes Lord yes Lord yes yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes yes Lord amen I press but not Crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure. That his joy is gonna be my strength. And though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes with the morning. I'm treating my sorrows. Treating my shame, I'm laying me down for the joy of the Lord. I'm treating my sickness, I'm treating. Persecuted, not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure. That his joy is gonna be my strength. And though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes with the Good to have each one of you with us this morning. We are thankful and blessed to be here today. We're glad that you're here with us today. Uh, by way of announcing, let me say that we're having a men's uh, supper tonight. Uh, all of you guys come out. It'll be at 6 o'clock. We're going to have a uh, spaghetti supper tonight. Uh, we're asking about three bucks uh, a plate. So come out and be with us. And that's just to kind of cover our, uh, the expenses. Jeannie's Sunday school class, Soul Sister Sunday school class is going to be... Uh, fixing that meal for us. So, uh, so anyway, so come out tonight, and uh, we're thankful for what it is they're doing. Uh, uh, don't forget our Valentine banquet. The youth uh, does a Valentine banquet. It's February the 8th. Is that right, Eric? Uh, if you want tickets for that, if you'll see Eric, he'll take care of you, or Kimberly, they'll get you situated. And uh, if you've not been to that, you'll have a good time. We always have a good time with it every year. So, uh, so support the youth and uh, plan to come out and be with us that night. Uh, are there any other announcements of any kind? I feel like I'm forgetting something. It's good to have each one of you. We're glad to be here today. This is a, uh, every day is a good day to be able to get up and come out to the house of the Lord and celebrate and to worship, gather together with friends and family and lift up the name of Christ. So, so today you feel free, uh, get engaged in worship. I know we've all got stuff going on in our life. Uh, lay that stuff down for a little bit, come into his presence and just enjoy who he is and you'll be strengthened through worship and you'll be encouraged through worship and you'll be surprised how how small problems appear to be when you get a good glimpse of who he is. So, uh, so this morning, let's just, 
Let's just get our eyes full. Let's get our heart full. And let's just enjoy who He is this morning. So if you'll bow your head, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. And we thank you for this opportunity to gather together in worship. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to, to serve and be a part of uh, this worship service. And we ask that your spirit would just fall upon this service, that we'd rest upon it in a wonderful way. And we thank you, Father, for meeting us here this morning. We know that there are many things going on in the lives of the families and the people that are, that are gathered together here this morning, whether it be at the 8.45 or 11 o'clock or Sunday school. We know that we've all got stuff going on. And, Father, it's a wonderful blessing to know that with everything going on in our life, through, the, uh, through our faith in Christ, we can come into your presence this morning. We can enjoy who you are and uh, in your holiness and your righteousness this morning. And we ask that you just uh, anoint these that lead us in worship this morning and that your will will be accomplished in a wonderful way this morning. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Take about four or five minutes, welcome some folks, and we'll get right back.
side, open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring a sacrifice. With these hands lifted high, hear my song and hear my cry, I will bring a sacrifice.
has heard, no heart could fully know. How glorious, how beautiful you are. A beautiful one I love. A beautiful one I adore. A beautiful one my soul must say. And powerful, so powerful, your glory fills us. The beauty of your majesty awakes my heart to sing. How marvelous, how wonderful you are. A oh, beautiful one I love, a oh, beautiful one I adore, beautiful one. Open my eyes, open my eyes to your wonders anew. You've captured my heart with this love. Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. You've opened my eyes, you've opened my eyes to your wonders anew. You've captured my heart with this love. Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as Beautiful one I love, oh, beautiful one I adore, beautiful one my soul must sing. Oh, beautiful one I love, oh, beautiful one I adore, beautiful one. Well, you can be seated this morning. We want to uh, do a new song for you today. And uh, just reminded of the scripture where uh, God tells us to cast all of our cares upon him for he cares for us. And uh, no matter where you are this morning in your life, whatever burdens that you may have, he calls us just to lay those down at his feet, to come as we are. I'm thankful that he didn't call us to clean up our act before he came. we came to him. He didn't call us to have everything in order before we came to him. But because of his grace that he shows us, we can come to him just as we are. So I just want to uh, encourage you with this song this morning.
just hope for the hopeless and all those who strain come sit at the table and come taste the grace there's rest for the weary rest that endures earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure so lay down your burden up your face, O oh, wanderer, come home, you're not too far, so lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up of what he's offered us uh, then he calls us to follow him so if you'll stand with us we're going to sing I've decided to follow Jesus this morning and I have decided to follow Jesus go with me though none go with me still I will follow though none go with me still I will follow though none go with me still
desire to uh, to follow you wherever you lead us today. God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. God, we thank you for the love that you show us. God, we thank you that, Lord, you call us where we are, knowing that, God, you change us from the inside out. And God, this morning, sometimes when you call us, things don't make sense. God, we have worries that don't make sense to us. God, things that we can't handle on our own, and you call us to lay them down at your feet and just to follow you, that your yoke is easy, your burden is light. So God, this morning, I pray you just encourage us to keep following you. For those who just decided that for the first time today, God, we thank you for for that, that person, God, who's put their trust in you. And God, this morning, I just pray you speak to us through your word. God, you just lead us to that next step where you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seen. <clears throat> you know, one of the greatest things uh, that we get to talk about that we have in Christ is the is the fact that we can come as we are. Uh, as the song they sang earlier, you know, I have. Uh, some family members who <clears throat> have a lot of different stuff going on in their life. They have some substance abuse problems and uh, uh, different things in the world that's just kind of got a hold of them. And I've talked to them before about going to church and, uh, or about going back to church. They, at one time, did go to church. And uh, so I've shared with them about, you know, going back. And, but they always give me this litany of things that are wrong in their life. You know, they give me this list of problems they've got from the things that's got them to just decisions they've made in life. And my response has always been, you know, that I, I don't ask them, I don't ask any of them to stop doing what they're doing. I just ask them to take, take that, uh, take who God is in that one hour on Sunday morning and just add it to your life. Don't, don't stop what you do. You know, my, my goal has never been to get them to stop and then start going to church and commit their life to Christ because there's really nowhere in the Bible does the Bible ever tell me or you that we need to wrestle sin and conquer sin? It, it doesn't do that. You know, nowhere in the Bible does it tell me to, uh, to conquer that thing that has got me. And, and because the truth is, we, we can't do it. We, we just can't do it. If we could do it, we wouldn't have it to begin with. So we can't do it. So what Christ has asked us to do is just take everything that we are, from the good parts to the bad parts to the ugly parts to the parts that nobody knows about, everything that goes on in our life, and just simply add Him to our life and let Him do what He does. And it's one of the greatest blessings in life on twofold. Number one, to experience the power of God in your own life that gives you power uh, to overcome and to conquer. And you get to watch God clean up your own life and then it's always a joy to watch God work in somebody else's life as he begins to clean up that individual's life. And, and, and he supplies the power, and he supplies the ability, and he supplies everything you need, the forgiveness, the grace, and the mercy to, to put all that stuff behind you and, and to be transformed into the person that God wants you to be. And so oftentimes, I, I think many people don't feel like they really can come as they are. You know, I think a lot of people feel like they've got to get things fixed. You know, they've got to get all their relationship issues handled, or they've got to get all their bad decisions taken care of, or they've got to stop doing this, or they've got to clean this up or clean that up. And, 
And the truth is that we, He's not asked us to do any of that. He's asked us to come to church or to come to Him and, and give ourselves to Him and just experience His power. And through the death and the resurrection and the power of Christ, uh, we have victory over these things that have us. And so, the other day I, I was, uh, I kind of got lost in, uh, I was listening to an old hymn, and the name of the hymn is Just As I Am. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was yesterday I got to listening to it, and I played it many times, you know. I, I, it, just, it was just on a loop, and I just continued to listen to it, because essentially it's saying that, that same thing, that just, just like, just as I am, I come to Christ with everything that I am, good, bad, and ugly. That, that's what I come, that's what I have to offer. And it's, it's nothing, really. And because He loves us, He gives us what He has in return. It's a wonderful transition. Uh, it, it's a win-win it's a situation, especially for those who come with all this stuff going on in their life. And so, let me encourage you, whatever you got going on in your life, I don't care how bad it is or how ugly it is, if you will keep God in it, eventually there will be power there to conquer and to overcome. You know, if you will, don't think that because of what you've done in the past or what's going on in your life right now, that you cannot come and be a part of who He is, you can. That, that's the purpose, that's the power of the death and resurrection of Jesus. This morning our sermon title is Faith for Today. And we're going to read you a few passages here real quick. And uh, we're going to take just a little bit of time and, and talk about what it means to apply our faith today in the life that we live. You know, unfortunately, it seems like, it seems like our todays are always transition periods, it seems like. You know, the, the today that we're in right now, it seems like we're, we were never, uh, this, we never accept or approach today as if this is truly the day that we've been created for. It's either a time when we're leaving something or it's a time when we're trying to get to somewhere. You know, it's, a, it's, a time, it's always a time of transition in our life. And, uh, you know, in, in raising, raising kids, we will talk about things. Uh, my sister, she has four kids, and, and they're all older now. Her youngest, her, her boys are 16, and her oldest one is uh, going to turn 21 this year. And, and we will sit and we'll talk about the kids. And, of course, the things that, that she talks about the kids are drastically different than the things that go on with my kids and the things that we deal with because of their age and where they're at and things like that. This past week, I got to sit down with her for a few minutes and we talked. And, uh, you know, and, and their issues now are the boys fighting over a car and, uh, you know, the girls doing this and that and all of that stuff going on. And, and she told me, like many people have told me, and about having little kids at home that you need to really embrace this time with your kids at home. It passes quick. You know, I hear that from a lot of folks. It passes quick. But when you're in the middle of it, it don't pass quick, just, just so you know. But if everybody else says it, it passes quick. It flies by. You're going to look back one day, and you're going to see as that's the, the greatest time and da 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 da, da and all these things. And, uh, and so I'd been wrestling with a passage I'm going to read to you here in a few minutes uh, for a while now. And it, it seems like it's odd that we stand at a place in life, and we either look back at great times or we're trying to do the right decisions today to anticipate great times in our life. If it's planning for retirement, or if it's, uh, you know, trying to get things in line financially, or trying to raise our kids the right way, or it seems like today, in our estimation, is never that great time. It's always a time, it's always a place where we're either looking back at great times. I can think back to when Amy and I first got married, and you know, we uh, started pastoring a church there in Walker County, and it was just me and her, and we went out there. And I was in school at the time, and, and put in that place, in that moment, in that today, you know, you don't realize, uh, you know, maybe a little bit how carefree you might be during that time. You don't, you don't appreciate the health of youth and things like that during that time. And it seems like you don't understand those things until you get past it and you look back on it. You know, you don't realize... Uh, you know, how carefree your high school days were until you're out of it and you can look back on it. You know, you don't realize how, uh, you know, fortunate maybe or how much enjoyable your college days were until you're past it. Even when you look back at the hard times, you know, trying to live on 99-cent Whoppers and Hormel Chili and things like that while you're in college, in those moments, those are very, very hard times. But even looking back on it, it seems, ah, that wasn't that big a deal. 
You know, but it seems like our todays are either spent looking back at a great time or anticipating a great time. You know, and we never, when do you get to experience the great time in the moment that you're having it? You know, when do you get, it's wonderful that I will get to look back one day with my kids and know that when all my kids were little and they were all under the same roof, that was such a great time. And I know that's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. But wouldn't it be great if I could recognize that today while I'm actually in that day? Instead of having that day pass and then look back on it, wouldn't it be great if I could, if I could stand today and appreciate the, the health of a, you know, a 40-year-old or uh, instead of looking back and saying, you know, if I knew I was going to live as long, I'd take better care of myself, you know? I mean, it, it, wouldn't it be nice to be able to stand and enjoy the greatness that this moment offers you today? And unfortunately, we often use our faith along the same lines. Faith is usually something that if we stand today with it and we talk about it, it is something that got us through a hard time or it is something that's going to get us through a difficult time in the future. It's, it's often propped up like that. It's, a, it's something that, uh, that sustained me during a difficult time or it, our faith was uh, that, that thing we experienced when we accepted Christ or in, in difficult situations. God did all these great things for us. It's always something wonderful that we used in our past. Or, like the passage I'm going to read to you here uh, shortly, it's, it's something about tomorrow. It's about that, that glad reunion day. You know, it's that time where, where Christ returns, or it's that time when we leave this walks of life and our faith is going to carry us on. And it's the things that, that Christ is going to do for us one day. And it seems that we often talk about faith along that line, but we never, we never really understand what our life looks like if our faith was fully engaged in today. Today, this moment, whatever has to be offered. And I'm convinced that we miss a lot of blessings or we miss a lot of wonderful miracles in our own life because faith becomes something that we use back when to get us through a hard time or it's going to be used as something in the future to get us through something that's completely out of our control. But what does it look like, once again, if we live in that, if our moments, uh, what we're in right now is experienced as the, the great time that it, that it truly is. And what would happen if our faith was fully engaged today in everything that we were a part of? What, what would unfold? There's a couple of passages. Let me st start with this one. This is one that you probably know pretty well. It's Hebrews 13 and 8. And here's what it says. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, I honestly believe that we might have the yesterday part nailed down pretty good. A lot of us can talk about the power that we've experienced through Christ yesterday. A lot of us can. I can tell you about when our house burnt and the way you know, our faith got us through and through mama's sickness and, and, and all of that stuff, making decisions about going to college or making decisions about getting married or making decisions about going into the ministry full time or whatever it might be. We have all of these uh, things in our life and our past of where our faith was great and it was wonderful and it did want these great things for us and so it's not hard for us to talk about Jesus Christ of yesterday and we can talk about Jesus Christ of tomorrow too we can talk about the time when this life is going to come to an end and he's going to take care of us and there's going to be this great resurrection and there's going to be this great reunion one day and we're going to put on a body that's not going to suffer and we're going to put on a body that's not going to you know we, we can talk about Jesus Christ of tomorrow but what does it mean when we say that he is God today that Jesus is the Jesus of today, just like He was then and just like He's going to be in the future, just like He's going to be in that time where we don't have any control. So what does it, instead of our days being lived as transition periods from one spot to the next, from trying to raise kids to retirement, instead of today being something of, of a day of when we're leaving something and trying to get to something else, what does it look like to fully engage our faith today and live in the fullness of Christ today? Today. I'll tell you one of the things that we're, that we're going to read about Lazarus here in a minute. One of the things that happens when we engage our faith today and we just deal with our, our, our normal Sundays or our normal Mondays or Tuesdays or whatever it might be, there's a lot of things that get resurrected in our life. There's a lot of power uh, that we experience. I want to read this passage to you. and it, It's kind of a lengthy passage. Uh, go on to the next one, if you will. Uh, let me read John 11, 20 through 44. And like I said, there's 24 verses here. Stay with me. You know this story pretty well. You know, Lazarus has died. <clears throat> he, uh, he was sick. He passed away. Jesus stayed where he was at for four days. He didn't go. Uh, and now that Lazarus has passed away, he takes the disciples, and now they go to where Lazarus is buried. And here's where it picks up. It says, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. 
But Mary was sitting in the house. Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews, who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came to Jesus, where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, uh, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And, when the, and, and, when, and he who, died, who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth, and Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Go back to the first part of this, Tyler, if you will, for me. Because I want you to pay attention, because within this first slide, we get this Jesus of yesterday, Jesus of today, and Jesus of tomorrow. And it seems like they have an awful lot of confidence in the Jesus of yesterday and the Jesus of tomorrow, but they're struggling with Jesus today. They've got a lot of confidence in what he could have done had he been there, and they've got a lot of confidence that one day in the resurrection, in the future, that he will, Lazarus will rise again. But they're having a faith problem with today. And unfortunately, many of us fall into that category. Listen to what, he says, what Martha says, and this is a running theme all the way through there. Verse 21 says that Martha says to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. That's, that's talking about the Jesus of yesterday. A lot of confidence in him. A lot of them have this confidence in him. All through here, it, you know, if this man would have been here, if this man would have been here, if this man would have been here. And then she talks about Jesus of today, but we don't talk much about it. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And then we talk about Jesus of tomorrow. Uh, and Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And it's interesting, how can you have so much faith in the Jesus of yesterday and what he could have done, and so much faith in the Jesus of tomorrow and what he's going to do, and be faithless today where we stand? How is it that, even when we talk about great things in our life, how can we always be in a place that's not good when times in the past, we've had some great times, and we're anticipating great times in the future, but we're never at a place that's great. We're never at a place that's good. There's, there's, there's a problem with that. There's an unsettling with that 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 keeps us in a state of chaos in our life. And, and you're right, absolutely. We get lost a lot of times with what's going on in life. And, and it's easy to get past stuff and look back on it and have proper perspective of it. You know, when we're raising kids at home and it's Monday morning and we're trying to get everybody ready for school and, and this one don't want to go and that one don't want to go and this one's faking a stomach ache and this one's got a fever and you're, you're trying to figure it out and you're to, you, you feel stressed and you feel pulled. It's hard in those moments to see the great... Boy, this is a great moment. 
You know, when you're at the supper table and all of them are gathered around and they're all sitting at the supper table and, and, and one's dropped their fork and the other one's turned their glass over and this one don't like what mama's fixed for her and, and this one's sticking it in his nose and, and, all, and all this stuff is going on. It's hard in that moment. I understand. It's hard in that moment to sit here and say, this is going to be a great memory one day. You know, I mean, I, I, I get that. I understand that. But it seems like when those times are past, and I know the day's coming when it's going to be me and Amy sitting down at the supper table by ourselves saying, it was great when the kids were here. You know, it was great having the kids around. And so it, it brings up the question, if, if we've been through great times and we're anticipating great times, what does it take to be present in those great times and understand them for what they really are? Well, I think it's all on the same lines as our faith. Like I said, I can write you a list of miracles that I've watched God unfold in my own life. You know, and I can even talk about things that I anticipate that God's going to do in my life. But in today, in the moment that we're living right now, it's often hard to see these as miraculous moments. You know, it's often hard to understand or properly perceive the power that is in Christ for today. And so that's why I ask the question, what would our life look like Instead of our faith being something that performed miracles in the past, or instead of our faith being something that's going to get us over the great divide in the future, what does it look like if our faith is something that's bringing about miracles today? Well, in this example here, and the experience that Martha and Mary have with Jesus, one of the things they saw was they were anticipating Lazarus to be resurrected one day in the future. They were also saying that Jesus had the power to heal if he had just come on, if he hadn't waited. You know, these days there was, there was power yesterday and there's going to be power tomorrow. But when Jesus steps in, Jesus displays to them the true power that He has for today. And so when, when that power begins to work itself out and Jesus explains to Mary that through me you're going to see the glory of God. You're going to see this, the great glory and you're going to see the power and the true revelation of who God is in and, 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 and Christ and He resurrects Lazarus up from the dead. He tells them to loose him and let him go. And that's what I think happens for us. I think if we can properly receive today with our, with our faith fully engaged, I believe we do experience resurrection in our life, not just in something in the future or not just something in my life that happened when I was nine years old, but I believe God does these miracles in our life regularly. Regularly. Let me explain. There are people, many of us, have things that are wrong in our life that one day is going to get better. Right? One day it's going to get better. We, we have anger issues. One day I, I'm going to put up a fight with my faith and, and we're going to conquer this. You know, we, we have uh, contentment issues. You know, one day when, when the kids are moved out and this is handled and our bills are paid and all this is taken care of, I'm not going to worry about all this stuff anymore and I'm finally going to be settled, and I'm finally going to be content. And I'm, I, I, we have all of those things that we're anticipating one day. And everybody's got stuff from, you know, like I talk about with my family, from substance abuse issues to uh, character issues to bad habits to whatever. One day, even if it's grudges that we're holding against people, or if it's unforgiveness that we settle in our heart, within us, we really believe that one day, we're going to let that go. One day we're going to. One day... Somewhere down the line, the power of Christ is going to be manifested within us in a remarkable, powerful way, and we're going to let that stuff go. You know, we're, we're going to offer forgiveness for those that have done us wrong. You know, we're going to be able to turn the other cheek, or we're going to be able to let, let it go. Whatever it is, we're going to be able to perform all these things and do these things with the power of Christ one day. Well, here, here's what I believe fully. I, I believe that if we would live our life fully engaged in faith for today, understand the moment that we're a part of today, I believe those things can happen in our life today. Today. And I believe this is one of the things that Jesus was teaching Mary. That yes, He is a mighty God that has done great things yesterday. And He is a mighty God that's going to do great things tomorrow. But He is still God today as well. And He can still do great things today in your life as well. The things that have been bound up, He can turn those, set those things free today. The things that have uh, been buried or placed away from us, going to deal with one day. He gives us power and He gives us strength to deal with those things uh, today. 
Go back to the psalm passage, if you will, Tyler, the one before this one. Listen to what David says in Psalm 118, 24 through 26. And this is a passage that most of us know pretty well. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Listen to verse 24 one more time. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. My question is, when is that day? When is that day? All of us are anticipating a day of where we're going to understand that it's a day that God's made and we're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. It's just not today. Right? I mean, tomorrow's going to come and tomorrow's going to go. Is that the day that he's speaking of? When is the day that we are supposed to fully engage it with our understanding of Christ and our, our love of God and realize that uh, wrestling at the breakfast table or at the supper table or through homework or being pulled one direction in a different direction in a different direction and then a different direction and, and your schedule's crossing and something's getting missed and having to redo this. When is the day that we understand Today is the day that the Lord has made. You know, and I fully believe that David is talking about today. He's talking about the day that he was in, in that moment. When does today become a great day for you? When, when are those days coming? And listen, hear me when I say this. I, I understand problems in people's lives. I know we've got them. Everybody does to a certain degree, from health to finance to relationships to job issues to, you know, family problems, whatever it is. I, I realize that, and, 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 and my understanding of that is, as long as we're here, we're always going to have that. I don't think David is saying, this is the day that the Lord has made, rejoice and be glad in it, unless you got some financial trouble. You know, I don't think he's saying this is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it unless you got a lot of homework tonight and you ain't got time for anything else. There is no exceptions. There are no unless in that. There's a call to understand that God created this day and He placed you in this day and you need to celebrate that wonderful gift that He's given you. And there's no exceptions to that. And like I said, unfortunately... You know, I would go as far to say almost that as far as commodity goes, today's probably one of the greatest commodities we have. And unfortunately, we spend so much time using it as nothing more than a time of transition from a great time or a great experience in our past to a possible great experience in our future, and the greatness never finds its way into our life today. What would it be to have our faith fully engaged in the moment that we're living in today? Like I said, I catch myself many times thinking about things. I've, I've got to do better. Uh, I need to work on this. Uh, you know, I need to deal with this. I'm going to deal with that. I'm going to deal with that. And I think all of us are guilty of saying, one day in the future, in that great resurrection, God's power is going to be manifested and that miracle is going to unfold in my life and these things are going to line up. You know, and, and Jesus teaches Mary and Martha a lesson that He's not just the God of yesterday that could have done something had He been here. And He's not just the God of tomorrow that in the resurrection He's going to live again. But He is the God of today. So, when we, as we come to the end of this portion of our time together today, I want us to think about it. I want us to wrestle with it. What are you doing with your days? What are you doing? I, I understand financial goals and setting those and working through those and trying to get from point A to point B. That's, that's great and wonderful. I understand trying to teach your children certain things and, and it's a process and it's one day after the next, after the next, after the next. I realize that. But you're going to look up one day and you're going to throw away all your todays. You're never going to get to experience the greatness of what today offers through Christ. You're going to look back on it, and you're going to see it. But you didn't get to experience it. You're going to get to see it from a distance. And you're going to remember how it was. And you're going to remember what a great time it was. Here a while back, I met with uh, some younger pastors who are just starting out. We're about to start our <clears throat> ordination process with some of them. And we go to Camp Simitago, and we have interviews with them. And they're coming through the interview process. And we get some time one-on-one -on -one with them just to talk to them, just to kill time with them. And... And I was sitting with one here a while back, and he's in his early 20s and, uh, you know, recently got married. And we were sitting there, and he was talking, and he was talking about, you know, things that are going on in his church and 
uh, he hadn't been married very long, a year or so, and you know, they're trying to figure out how those relationships work, and uh, he had school, he was trying to get through school, and then all this ordination stuff was dumped on him, and it was this, and it was that, and it was this, and it was that. You know, and I seen in him the same things that I was guilty of. Man, he's throwing away today. Throwing away today. He's never going to understand until he's way past it and he can get to a spot where he can look back about how, uh, how much of a, of a good experience this truly he's having right now. He don't see it and he don't understand it. So how is it that we do become conscious for today? How is it that through the power of Christ we can honestly see where we're at today? I told people my kids would, would probably vastly disagree. Uh, I feel like I was a much better parent in my late 30s than I was in my 20s. You know what I mean? I feel like I was a much better parent in my 30s than I, than I was in my 20s because in my 20s, and to a certain degree early on in my 30s, it was still about where we're going. It was still about where we're going. Finally, there was a, something clicked in my life, and uh, you begin realizing and you understand that that I've got to be present today in the life of my family, in the life of my children. And, you know, and I don't want to get one day to, down the road and look back and remember these times as great and actually never experienced them myself. I want to be there in the moment. But listen, I'll go further than that. I would also say that's the truth, that's the truth uh, with my faith as well. I don't want to stand here today and just remember great things that God has done for me. And I don't want to stand here today and just anticipate great things in the future. I want to experience that greatness today. And if you don't think, and there's plenty of areas in my life where God can display His greatness, if I would just receive Him as Christ today. Today. Yes, great things yesterday. No doubt, powerful things to come in the future. But right now, in this present moment, He is, he is as much God as He's ever been. The same God that could have prevented Lazarus from dying, the same God that will resurrect him in the, in the end times is the same God that has power for today. I think it would do us all some good just to stop for a while, take a little inventory and process what is our faith doing today in our life in Jesus? Are we present with our faith today? Or is it something in the past or something that's going to be? Let me encourage you today stop for just a minute uh, Heath, you want to come around? Stop for just a minute. Embrace this time that you have. I, I get it. There might be some tough stuff. There might be some hard stuff. And there might be some complicated situations that's going on in your life right now. But somewhere in the middle of all of that is the presence of Christ. And because of that, there is some greatness there. There is some greatness there. So before you throw this day away as a time of transition to get to the next day, why don't you take some time and experience the true power and the greatness of who Christ is today? I believe it's available. I believe He offers it. And I believe in the process of that, I believe there are some things that get set free in your life. I believe there are some things that get resurrected in your life. I believe there are some things that you, you finally get over or you get past. Instead of it coming one day, you know, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Today, this day, because he's as much God today as he's ever going to be, ever throughout existence. He is as powerful today as he is ever going to be. Don't throw this time away. Stand to your feet. If you bow your heads, let me pray. Then we'll invite you to come pray this morning. Whatever you got going on in your life, whatever it is you're dealing with, something that you hope goes away one day, why don't you experience the power and the resurrection of Christ today? Bow your head, let me pray. Father, we come to you and we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the opportunity that we get to gather together with friends and family uh, in your presence. Lord, we know that there may come a day of when we don't get together like this. There may come a day, Lord, of when all we get to do is remember a time of when we could gather together like this. And God, I pray that we don't throw away this moment, that we don't throw away today anticipating, thinking, or hoping for a better one. But Lord, that we fully embrace it through our faith in Christ. 
And Lord, you know what's going on in our lives. You know what we're wrestling with. You know what we're dealing with. And Lord, this morning, uh, I pray that whatever it might be, we lay those things down at your feet and we get to experience your power this morning. In Christ's name, amen. As they sing, I invite you to come pray this morning. Earth has no sorrow, heaven.